Hi there, it's Tyler from Electric Shaver Guide, and I've put together a short video series to help you figure out which electric shaver is the best for you. I have some new video tips that will greatly improve your chances of buying the right shaver. And once we've covered those, you'll get access to the Electric Shaver Buying Guide, which is a full 70 page report that you can download for free. So I'd recommend watching till the end where you can find links to part two and to the buying guide. Now, since I've been reviewing electric shavers, I've gotten a lot of questions like which shaver is the best or which shaver should I buy? And I've received a lot of emails where people give me a list of things they want and their budget and ask for recommendations. Now, the problem is there are so many different models out there and it can get really confusing. There's different technology and features as well as a wide range of prices. I know it can be frustrating and I know you don't want to buy the wrong product. This is actually why I decided to create electric shaver reviews. I ran into all these problems when I looked into buying my first shaver. And trust me, in reviewing the best selling models, I've spent a lot of money on units that just aren't effective for me. So through emailing back and forth, I've helped a lot of people find the right shaver for them and I've received a lot of positive feedback. But there's one thing which is missing from almost all the email requests I get. No one ever thinks to take their beard thickness into consideration. And if you don't consider your beard type, it's just a game of chance and it happens over and over. Unless you ask for a recommendation along with all your details, and I can't respond to everyone, the typical path to finding an electric shaver is to search for the best of or top 10 and read other people's reviews. The problem here is that depending on your facial hair type, a lot of the models might not work well for you, even if they've received hundreds of four out of five star ratings. Not only do user reviews generally not disclose their type of facial hair, they've usually only reviewed one or two shavers. Unfortunately, a few really good or really bad reviews can sway your decision the wrong way. Now, I'm not saying you can't find yourself the right shaver by just buying one of the best selling models, but you definitely run a higher risk of picking the wrong one. Choosing a shaver is different than choosing other products. For example, a TV set will list the specs it has and you're pretty much guaranteed to get them. So you check the specs, you make sure it's compatible with equipment you already own, check out some reviews, and you'll most likely be happy with your purchase. And there are many other examples of products where this works pretty well. For electric shavers, it's different. It's a much more personal product and certain factors about you need to be taken into account. So here's an example of what happens a lot. You're searching for a rotary shaver and you don't want to spend more than $100. And you've heard wet shaves are better than dry shaves, so you check out Amazon's best sellers. First one's a bit too cheap, so you scroll down, you find one you can use wet, and it's on sale. It retails for $89.99, but it's on sale for $69.97, so it's right around your budget and you check to see there's 125 reviews with an average of four out of five stars. They say it's quiet, smooth, easy to clean, fits nice in the hand, you can use it wet, dry, or with shaving cream. So you're in a rush, the holidays are coming up, and you decide to buy it. But unfortunately, the shaver just isn't a good match for your type of facial hair. You test it out, improve your shaving technique, but after trying it for a few weeks, you just realize it's not going to get any better. You did not consider your beard thickness and you wasted 70 bucks. The worst part is that this might even deter you from electric shavers altogether. So what you need to figure out is your beard type first, then work around your budget. So how thick is your beard? Here are two pictures of my beard and I would classify myself as having thick facial hair. If you have that short, dense stubble look which grows back pretty fast, you have a pretty thick beard and you need to match it with an appropriate shaver. So to keep it simple, we want to classify your beard as either thick, medium or light. 
and one technique is the picture test. Here's a single example of each type. You can see the thick beard has that dense stubble look. The facial hair is short, but it's dense enough to cover a large area. A medium beard tends to be a bit more patchy and the facial hair needs to be longer in order to cover more area when compared to a thick beard. And a light beard is very patchy and the facial hair is very thin. It usually takes over a week for significant growth. Shaving frequency and feel is another way to figure out how thick your beard is. If you need to keep a clean shaven face for work and you shave every day, you most likely have a thick beard. If you rub your hand on your face against the grain and it has a sandpaper feel, you have a thick beard. Some people have this after 12 hours of shaving, while others may have it after a few days of shaving. If you need to shave three or more times per week and your facial hair has more of a dense type of look rather than a long and thin look, classify yourself as having a thick beard. Some people may still need to shave three or more times per week, but their facial hair is not very thick or dense. In this case, you probably have a medium beard. If you don't have that sandpaper feel and you just sort of have a few soft whiskers each morning, then it's probably not a thick beard. But again, if you're on the fence, consider your beard to be on the thicker side. Figuring out your beard thickness is just the first step. You still need to select the right shaver. Well, in the next video, we're going to look at how to distinguish between specific models which will help clear the confusion when you're trying to choose one. This is going to help you look at different models and figure out exactly what they offer and if you really need any of the extra features. So we'll run through some specific examples. And if you did find this useful, liking the video would be much appreciated. And if you're ready for part two, you can click the annotation on the screen, which I would recommend. However, if you want to jump ahead and download the full buying guide right away, you can click the second annotation on the screen.